Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends. And welcome to this, a brand new day. Yay! And it being Monday, the 15th, in two days, Wednesday, the 17th, I have a colonoscopy appointment. And on that day, 9 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to be there at my appointment. They are going to do various things. I'm going to have an IV put in, and then they're going to shove a tube up my backside so that they can take a look at how my intestines look. So hopefully everything's good. I mean, I, if there are polyps and growths that need to be snipped, then let them be snipped. But hopefully nothing's precancerous or any such like that. So I don't know what's going to happen, but yay. I have been drinking laxative every single day and not really anything happening because I don't eat much anyway. No solid food from now until Wednesday. So yay. So Wednesday, not going to have a vlog uh, come up immediately. I'm going to have to wait until I come back. So I'll put up something recorded previously. And for preloading, if you could hit the like button, that would be very cool. Toss me a like, I do appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be cool. I have a fast leak in my subscriber count and you know, life is life, but if you could, that would be fine. And of course, I wanna thank each and every one of these patreon.com patrons of mine. With my limited income from my disability, I most of my money goes to rent. So these people are literally helping to keep me alive. Thank you so very much. And if you would like to become a Patreon patron like one of these beautiful people, there are links in the video description. So thumbs up on that. Very cool. It is nice to be alive and I appreciate that very much. Thumbs up and thank you. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna have to make something up so it gets posted that morning and then I'll do a video when I get back probably just saying, hi, I just got back, yay. And so we'll see what happens. One of the things that I did wanna talk about is yesterday I talked about doing videos of music that just I like versus chasing views and you know, the stuff that's popular because I could do things like only react to Lana Del Rey and get a lot of views or I could do stuff that's other stuff as well and maybe get very few because I've reacted to some stuff that's I'm lucky if it's gotten 12 15 views one of which I is I believe it's going public today a reaction to again Uboa oh boy <laughs> The first time I reacted to a, a Yeboah song, it's largely kind of incoherent noise, but it, it's beautiful. It is music. It is art. I, I, I love it. So I went into this one not quite knowing what to expect, and boy, it was more of the same. It was largely just incoherent noise. If you're not into it, and I am. It's loud. It's noisy. It's kind of incoherent. It's a mess. And it's beautiful. This is the sort of stuff that I love to listen to. I will put on and listen to while I'm doing other things. So yeah, I'm chasing my passions and that I'm reacting to stuff like Yuboa and all that. And I'm also going back and reacting to people like Lana Del Rey because I enjoy listening to her voice. She's only got a limited discography, as do most people. So eventually, it's like you run out. So you got to do other things anyway. So I just scatter things in. And yeah, but I just wanted to talk about that because Uboa, check them out. U-B-O-A. If you don't like Uboa, you will know immediately. If it is up your alley and you like Uboa, you will know like that. So check them out on YouTube, take a listen, and here's hoping that you enjoy them like I do. Thumbs up on that. Oh boy, and last night, ay, 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 I had insomnia because of overheating. Uh, and it was raining last night, but even with just two shirts like this, it was almost too hot going out walkies. And when I came in this morning, I've had to open my window wide 
I sometimes have my space heater on during the daytime if it gets really cold, but mostly it's on at night at the lowest setting just so the hamster doesn't freeze. It was hot in here at 65. I was burning up. Lately, I've been having a sheet and a fleecy blanket to keep me warm at night. Last night, even a sheet was almost too much. It was ugh. Thumbs up for that. But past that, I've just been watching videos, relaxing, uh, trying to think, and then, of course, going walkies at night. And the thing is, I enjoy going walkies at night. I have changed again. Oh, my dentures, I'm so sorry. I can't afford to get them fixed. I can't afford to buy food. So if I get my dentures fixed, that's food I can't buy. So they don't fit, and I'm trying to keep them from falling out as I talk. I need to get them fixed, because I can't afford to replace them if they break. That's $1,300. And I can't even afford to, the, you know, the 180 some odd to get these fixed now. So what am I going to do when they break? Because I can't get them fixed to make them fit properly. <sighs> Being poor is fun. Yay? But, but, try to remember what I was talking about. I know I had the overheating I was talking about, and the... Uh, insomnia thereof but the things that I was also doing yes I remember and just trying to be active you know and I enjoy walking at night again for the past couple of years I have not liked being out at night and I've gone walkies while it was still light during the summertime I haven't really enjoyed that so much this year I regret the Sun going away because of my increasing sads this year but at the same time I like walkies at night when it's dark. I like walkies when it's rainy and all that. It's pleasant. It's fun. I enjoy it. So I just need to fit another daytime thing in there. Yay. <laughs> it's a good thing. <clears throat> but I have also, of course, still been thinking on my whole inside-outside setting. I know I'm really talking about that a lot over the past couple, but it's just... A whole thing that fascinates me quite a bit. I mean, I've got a whole thing where I've worked out where, I, mm, where I've mentioned how each tile, if you look at it above like it's a board game, which it isn't, but it's an analogy that kind of works. Each tile that you would go in has billions and billions of things that it could be, and all these things exist, but each observer can only see, you know, one at a time. And unless you're from an area that's it's, it's worn in, you're going to go into someplace random in each area you go into. But intelligence and just use grinds in stuff. But that's not for everything and everyone. If you come from an area that's attuned in that area, yeah, every time you come to that tile, your playlist will that gets put on shuffle consists of that one tile your city your land where you come from and it gets put on shuffle but you know one title on shuffle you're there that's the state of the outside where we are when you go into the razor's edge that's all attuned from all the travel you go from here to there that's where you go that's where the door is but then you go inside from there you know there's apple rock and such there are billions upon billions of plates, but if you're a human being coming from inside or well, outside here to there, you will go to the crossroads and then there's the Crimson Kingdom because it's been ground in. You are attuned out here, which is attuned to the razor's edge. And that's all attuned to that place that's outside. If you can break that connection travel far enough it'll zero out this area that shows who and what you're connected to and then you walk back into that same area like the same apple rock area but with no connection to your old place you could enter any one of the tiles that are still there there are many cities in that area not connected to the outside and so they're not attuned to apple rock they're from those people that are, since there's more there, there on the inside than there is on the outside, there are places that all those tiles, they get 
attuned to their area. So when they leave, they always come back to this. Their playlist is limited to this. Whereas up here, we, our playlist is limited to this. Same place, but the observers can only observe one at a time. And wherever you're attuned to, that's what you get. So thumbs up on that. <laughs> and of course, I was thinking more and more. I've been thinking a lot. There's a lot of stuff I thought about with the King in Crimson. And I've got a bigger overarching idea of the full story, full earth. There's always going to be more until I actually get it done of what's happening for this book idea I've got with all the short stories, the slices of life. Because it is, it happens within a year of life on the razor's edge, starting with, you know, the first couple months of the book, things are just getting tense on the razor's edge. You know, it's been tense, it's getting worse. You know, the, the pressure is ratcheting. Nobody knows what's happening. And then the apple rock kaiju goes and rampages and eats and just, it's awful. For the, then, until you hit about the net 50% of the book, everything deals with the ramifications and after effects of the the rampage but it's a slice of life and life does go on so about the two-thirds point a lot of the stuff there's about half of it happening with ramifications of apple rock but also things are continuing to happen they're dealing with and the King in Crimson is sending a team down into the southern exit off of the crossroads. That does not end well. That happens at about the two-thirds mark. And then toward the end, when it all wraps up, it's, yeah, the, the rampage was bad. That was a year ago. And people are rebuilding and people are continuing to live and things are happening and life goes on. And I figure as well, what would happen toward the end is something along the lines of one of the people from the Crimson Kingdom is talking to like the mayor, just saying, we have stopped our investigations into what and why. Everything goes back so far and it's all connected and it all leads up to things like this. We've already gone back 200 years through records and things and everything that you could say actually points to actions possibly from the Apple Rock Kaiju. But if it's that powerful, what can you do? After all, even the King in Crimson put in the plans to put a repeater booster tower into Apple Rock. And as it turns out, that was right where the gas lines that were put in by another person who was affected by the Kaiju had the gas lines so that it would blow up and destroy the repeater booster because everything, all communications had become routed through it. So it just crippled the whole place by that thing being there. So the Apple Rock Kaiju is even influencing places like the, the Crimson Kingdom and the, Crim the King in Crimson. Are they affecting the Pale Kingdom? What is the reach? What is the extent? Eventually you have to say, it doesn't matter. Live your life. If you try to base your life on, if I do this, will people get killed in the future? Or if I don't do this, will people get killed in the future? It will drive you mad. If this thing has this much control, all you can do is live your life and try to be a good person. All of these people are continuing to build up everything that they have thought of. They're still rebuilding the town. But even the things that are supposed to be anti-kaiju measures, how do they know that they're not just another thing that in a hundred years is being set up for the next rampage? You can't. Live your life. Do the best you can. And that's going to be sort of the general message of the book and all of the stories. So it's... I don't know exactly how to get where I'm going because if I have everything set up all together and there's nothing to discover as I go, then I find there's no reason to even write it. It's boring. 
I like to discover things as I write. So no, I don't know everything. I don't know all the things that are happening. I'm just still discovering what's and why's and wherefore. So thumbs up for that. And thank you for watching and listening. It is cool. I do appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments my community tab. And I'm going to go through and thank however many people have left me a comment. Far less than the 25 I used to have to thank. But you know what? Anything more than zero is a plus. So thank you very much. No matter who you are, the fact that you left me a comment is appreciated. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker. And even though I count American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand with my depression, fibro, ADHD, and a whole host more of issues, I... <laughs> I, I'm getting better all the time, but one day. Jocelyn Williams, <laughs> thank you. Favel, not yet, but thank you. Confused Owl, thumbs up and thank you very much. Flora Mew, also greatly appreciated, good stuff. Muna Master, 1990, greatly appreciated. Ben B, thumbs up and thank you. Craig YAC, thumbs up. Yuki Likes Hot Potatoes, greatly appreciated, good to see you. We have Mountain with the whole uh, bunch of letters after that that I have no chance of pronouncing, but thank you very, very much. Then we have Pancake Cookie, thumbs up and good to see you as well. Uh, did I already thank Larry from Space? But Larry from Space, thank you very, very much, good to see you. We have Quangalogi, greatly appreciated. And then there is Zach Campbell, thumbs up and thank you. We have Futch Daring, greatly appreciated. And that is it. Thumbs up and thank you also very, very much, each and every one of you. You get me out of my head, I say, as I click these things out so they don't just shine like a spotlight on me. In, out of my head, into the world, and dealing with real people. It is appreciated. And with my hands in the air, I don't know what device you're watching this on, but in the video description, I have links to all of my channels, if you could check that out. I also have links to things like Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and again, I would like to thank each and every one of these Patreon.com patrons. Literally, they keep me alive and fed, and my pets alive and fed, and that is awesome. Thank you very, very much. So if you could help out and become a patron, that would be very cool. If you'd like to help out and not become a patron, I do have links to a PayPal there. And I'm not, not above grubbing for your spare cash, because when you got next to nothing, anything helps. And of course, if you'd like to help out without sending any money at all, I do have that Amazon wishlist link with things like cat food and hamster bedding and hokey smokes. If you could help, that would be awesome. Now, of course, do not feel obligated. I do not feel entitled that if you cannot or do not donate, I do take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. If you could toss me a like, I appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. And of course, if you could hit the notification bell on the subscription button, thumbs up and thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Pokey smokes. And of course, seek creativity. Keep your brain working. It is literally use it or lose it. Keep learning. It is a good thing. Seek positivity. I was a negative person for far too many years and it only hurts you and others around you. Seek balance as well. Moderation in all things. It is very, very good. Possibly boring, but much more healthy. Oh boy. And of course, if you have to go out, please maintain your social distancing, wear a mask, Wash your hands often, try not to touch your face, get the jab, get the vac booster when it's available for you. Gotta get through this, oy vey. So, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is definitely, well, quite frankly, in my book, a thumbs up.